So, welcome back. Uh, it's been a while since I've done a watch video now, but uh, I thought this one is quite cool. It's a um, Breitling Cosmonaut, so not Navi timer. It's, um, it's one the customer has uh, sent in. It's uh, missing a second hand, but I think you'll be very happy to have a look at this video where you can actually see it lying underneath the uh, crystal here on the dial that's good the uh, bezel does not turn around we don't have to force that right now because we have a hand in there um, it looks like the minute hand's been replaced at some point so i've been um, it's been requested that we um, we uh, paint this hand up to match these two um, i did suggest we just paint all three hands so they match but i could try and see if i get a similar tone to this but um I'll try and match it up to this first, and if I can't do that, we'll paint all three so we have a matching set of hands. The luminous compound, we're going to match up to the dial somewhat, see what we can do. The previous person's had it, put this strap on. Unfortunately, they had put fixed spring bars, but luckily I managed to um, coax it off with a bit of, um, bit of force, basically. But we did that without damaging the um, the spring bar holes in the case. That's the important thing. Um, is there anything else? Yes, it does not start, stop or reset. So, yeah, looks like a fun job. Let's uh, open it, open this one up. Look at that movement's actually in fantastic condition. The reason why it's not start stopping, I can see it straight away, is because the uh, spring has kind of disengaged with the start stop lever. Let's see if we can uh, put that in place like that. There, start, stop, reset. Good. All right, I can send it back to the client now. Um, no, not so fast. I think we need to clean it up. That's what we call dry humor. Anyway, um, yeah, that's a good start. Uh, I think this one will, it will come out from the back. So we can start taking, by taking, setting these around. I'm going to set the hands up so they're ready to be taken off the dial later on. On the movement, there we go, such. That movement's actually in fantastic condition. The reason why it's not start stopping, I can see it straight away, is because the uh, spring has kind of disengaged with the start stop lever. Let's see if we can uh, put that in place like that. There. Start, stop, reset. Good. All right, I can send it back to the client now. Um, no, not so fast. I think we need to clean it up. That's what we call dry humor. Anyway, um, yeah, that's a good start. Uh, I think this one will, it will come out from the back. So we can start taking, by taking, setting these around. I'm going to set the hands up so they're ready to be taken off the dial later on. On the movement, there we go, such. might need to come out from the front so we're going to take the bezel off we need to clean up because that's not been moving it's supposed to be moving freely Ooh. there we go and here we have the second hand the original second hand well you'll be very chuffed with that there we go good stuff put that to the side there's the rotating bezel it always seem to be not in good condition but this one has all its print still and it's a lovely patina if you don't mind a bit of patina um, patina not betina yeah 
I'm just gonna, it's all dry now, so we're gonna leave that, put that to the side. See, it comes out, um, come out the front. So let's get the K screws off. It seems like I'm uh, winging it, but as I go, it's because I don't do these every day, but I have a general idea how it goes. So. Movement out. Well, this case is going to need a proper clean. And the movement will definitely need a good service. Panels are a little slack. It should be tightened by the um, enhancer. I'll show you the dial foot later on. All right, um, try not to mumble while I do this. We're going to remove the hands and basically take the movement apart and give it a full service. I will go back to normal time when I'm going to put it back together, but uh, taking it apart is the opposite of putting it back together, so you're not going to miss anything. So yeah, I'm going to fast, um, fast forward that. I'll do that in time lapse. So this um, vessel should turn around. It's not doing that at the moment. so. I'm going to take this C-clip out, pulls this bezel down, if I'm able to. from both sides at the same time, as such, there we go, C-clip, and the C-clip out, we should be able to get this bezel off in the part, there we go, this has to come off, and uh, as you can see, it's very, very grimy and will benefit from a good clean. Another thing I'm going to do on this watch is I'm going to take the pushes off. So when we clean this watch up, we can clean inside the pushes as well. Because I'm pretty sure those gaskets will have gone. We can replace those gaskets. But I don't expect this to be fully waterproof. It's just... Uh, Nice that it's, uh, the springs and everything here are as clean as possible. There we go. I don't know if there's gaskets in this one, but um, we shall take it apart. These watches are not waterproof. They are supposed to be up in the air, not uh, beneath the ocean. Yes. There we go. There we go. You can clean up the uh, pushers nice as well. If you look on the inside here, it's quite a lot of gunk collected in there. Give that a good uh, go in the ultrasonic cleaner. I got the crystal, pop that off the bezel, such. Um, this is pretty thin, so I think I'm going to move into this one.
here I've fitted the um, cap jewels and the uh, shock protection jewels um, back in place. They, um, I'll do a separate video where I can go uh, step by step of how I do it. I do believe some of my uh, earlier service videos have that, but to save a bit of time, I'm just uh, going to explain it. Basically, you have a um, chaton jewel at the bottom and a cap jewel on top held in place with this uh, Inca shock spring. Uh, the Inca sp shock spring being probably the most used shock protection uh, spring there is. And the idea is that when this balance gets shocked and moves sideways or up and down, this spring will take the impact rather than the um, rather than the pivot breaking in the jewel uh, if there's no movement. So very efficient uh, shock protection. You have variations of this that uh, might even be better, but this is a very good and uh, fairly tested system and uh, it's always nice to have that on your watch. So now I'm going to take the balance cock off together with the balance and we can start putting the base movement back together. The first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to fit the uh, setting lever screw in place and the setting lever because if you forget to put the setting lever screw in now and you put everything together and you're going to put the uh, put the setting mechanism in place you have to take the get or take the bridge off again because you forgot it this comes in um, this comes in uh, before the um, bridge comes up so I might as well fit it now and um, attach the, um, well, I can loosely fit the setting lever as well. Then that's done, and uh, I don't have to worry about it. I think that's going to be my new routine, um, just so I don't forget it. It's very easy when you're working on watches to um, forget a stage like this, even though it's rare now, but still, if you do it, it's quite annoying. So now the setting lever and setting lever screw is uh, in place. I cannot um, do that mistake. Next, I'm going to start putting the gear train back in place, and I might as well start with the barrel. And because this is has a uh, hour recorder on the dial side, there you can see there's a huge hole. There's no um, there's no pivot hole for the uh, lower pivot, but uh, we'll get to that later. So at the moment, we'll just have to rest this in place and let it just be there. Well, in the uh, center here, so you hit the um, hit the uh, center wheel uh, pivot, and um, as well already fit. Now we're going to fit the oh, don't drop things. That's the fourth wheel. It's good to put in now. This comes in later, and this has a separate bridge, but. Um, as well get everything ready lined up. Third wheel. Center wheel, okay. The second wheel. So that's all lined up. Going to get a photo for the client. A droplet of oil on the top of the pivot for the center wheel. And I'm also going to do that for the upper barrel elbow. Just want a tiny little droplet hitting the side. Like so. Now that's in that's in the correct position. All the well, you can almost see the pivot here is in place. And now I'm going to fit the second bridge, which is for the fourth wheel, an escape wheel. I'm going 
do hope to get some better lighting one day uh, for these videos and maybe a better stand as well so I can get some more fancy shots but uh, unfortunately this is as good as it's going to get for now. I've seen people they make very nice videos where they spend a lot of time editing and uh, having close-ups etc but I'm, I'm just trying my best on the uh, time up that I have. This isn't a hobby, it's more work, so it's, it's, you can see that the gear train's moving freely, so that's all engaged as it should be. Very nice. It's barely touching this on the side, I'm not trying to scratch anything or make any marks, but to see that moves. Good. Now we can place the screws in place. Let's have a look. I guess this is a, um, a bridge is a determination where you have more than two screws, so this is a cock. So this is a cock holder in the escape wheel and third wheel in place. Oh, this is the gear train bridge holding the rest of the gear train in place. At least I try to get the terminology right. When tightening the screws, I kind of I feel when they are fully tightened, and I kind of try and torque it a little bit, very like gently on each screw, because I don't want to over tighten anything. If you over tighten it, you uh, first of all you're going to make a an uncomfortable job for the second person to work on the or the next person to work on this watch if it's not even yourself and secondly you risk also buggering thread or breaking your screw screw or head off um, so it's kind of an art not to over tighten but also not have it too loose well, at this point um i think i'm just going to fit the crown wheel so that's in place for when I fit the setting mechanism because we're going to fit the second mechanism and then we're going to fit the um, hard recorder mechanism on the dial side and then we can actually test the movement by winding it because then we have the pivot uh, in the correct places for the for the um, for the uh, barrel arbor. The crown wheel, I like to put a couple of droplets on each side just to make sure it's evenly dispersed. The oil. It would be nice to have a microscope camera to see what we'll invest in in the future so you can see how we oil that nicely. But drop here, drop here should be enough. And then that has its own little bridge holding it in place. This movement is in very good condition and an absolute pleasure to work on. Careful, don't want to slip and scratch anything. There we go. Especially when you have these small screws like this. You really got to make sure you don't over tighten it because you can break this screw where we can share the screw head off so easily. And it's not uncommon get watches where they've been tightened too much or 
the integrity of the screw head is already damaged and it takes almost nothing to break them. Again, you don't want them too loose, but you don't want them too tight either. It'd be very easy to break these off. But not these two today, so I'm happy about that. Next, I'm going to turn the movement around and we can start on the dial side. I'm putting a couple of drops of grease, uh, well, uh, not grease, uh, red oil on the uh, center wheel pivot that comes through here. And I'm going to push on the um, clutch wheel so the cannon pinion it just clicks on like so, straight. And um, yeah, that is for when you're setting the time. This uh, will slide on the center wheel, but um, so this is tight enough to uh, you see I'm moving it. It will um, drive the uh, hour and minute hand for the wheels. Um, but when you set the time, this will slide on the uh, center wheel, allowing it to uh, not affect the timekeeping. Another thing I've done, I've all under the microscope, I've all the um, the um, pivots for the gear train. Put a little dab of oil here, here, here for the uh, setting mechanism. Also going to grease up the stem. bit of uh, grease here. The trick is every sliding surface should have a little bit of grease to assist the uh, the, um, the parts for sliding uh, nicely. Next I have the um, this is the winding pinion. Actually, this is the sliding pinion correction. Put a couple of drops of grease on where it engages with the winding pinion. There. Also, a tiny bit of grease here where it uh, slides on the yoke later on, the yoke lever. the winding stem here. I'm going to loosen the uh, the setting lever a tiny bit. That means I can push it all the way in like that and I can tighten it again. When it's been tightened then you can see how that moves back and forth. This is the sitting yoke lever coming in. That goes there. And then we have the spring for it. it comes on top here. The spring of course has to be tensioned in order to fit. Go like that. And just for you know, because we can we put a little bit of grease in the touching point there as well. Next, we have to fit the intermediate setting wheels. Oh, preferably not losing them. Sometimes they're beveled, then usually the beveled edges will go down to engage with the sliding pinion. This one did not look to be beveled. Now we can fit the uh, 
setting liver spring. Make sure we get rid of any fibers that might fall onto the movement while we're working on it. It's amazing how much havoc a piece of fiber can do in the right place in the movement. So um, it's always good to be on top of that. There we go. Again, we can um, put a little bit of grease on the sliding surfaces here. Put that in here. Goes down a nice amount. So I haven't connected the um, the ratchet wheel on the other side, so this is moving freely. But you can see it will happily set. So the next thing we're going to do is start uh, fitting the hour recorder. Now the setting and winding mechanism are in place, we can start looking at the hour recorder because we're looking at the hour recorder bridge um, back. So we got this little uh, spacer bridge here. This is the hour recorder driving wheel. So this is basically this the pivot that goes over the um, the uh, barrel of the pivot here, and there's um, slots for engagement underneath. You have all engaged with the um, jagged edge of the teeth here, and this teeth will drive the hour recorder. So these are very sensitive. Fortunately, these are in very good condition and uh, I doubt we'll have any issues with that. That's the um, hour recorder wheel. Bit of, a little bit of movie magic. I've uh, skipped a little bit here because um, I also have to focus on uh, what I'm doing. But this had to come in. There's a lever that goes to the uh, column wheel on the other side. It goes to post, goes straight through, and you screw it onto here. And that's what um, start stops your chronograph. And here you got your reset lever. I might do a little bit of um, skipping of some scenes just because I'm focused on putting the watch together. I'll try and explain as I go along. Sometimes my um, communicating skills um, fall a bit short when I'm trying to concentrate.
Right, we're starting to get somewhere here now. You can see the, uh, we've got the reset lever. And uh, when you start it, let's push this over here. It blocks it. Well, not at the moment, but it will do. And let's put it into position. That goes that way, yeah. That will block it, so now we won't do it. Hopefully that is our, our recorder uh, in where it should be. Uh, you have your reset lever here that will uh, be pushed when it's reset and it will, uh, right now it's blocking, but uh, when this is put into um, to a stop position, we are ready to reset, this will uh, be, um, this lever will move, allowing this to be pushed in and um, reset your um, your hour recorder. This spring, uh, this lever here is holding on to that little uh, pinion here, which uh, the driving pinion for the hour recorder, and that lifts up. This you can see here, this little pin will lift up this uh, kind of holder spring, and that will lift the um, disengage the teeth from the uh, from the uh, barrel, um, so that that doesn't wear down when you're resetting it. It won't have any friction. So. Quite a clever, nice construction. Now we can pop the movement around and start. Uh, well, first of all, we're going to fit the ratchet wheel, wind it up, uh, fit the uh, escape uh, escape pallet and uh, balance. And we can see how the movement performs. Now for the pallet fork. And do that under the microscope. So two things you can see here is the pivot aligned in the jewel. Um, that's why I do this under the microscope sometimes, just to make sure that I um, that I don't break it. Because if that's not in, uh, if that's not seated in the right, correct position, and you uh, tighten the screw, it's going to um, it's going to um, break. So there's no oil on the uh, impulse pin. I'll put a droplet of oil on that now. There you can see that droplet of oil. What we're going to do now is just disperse that onto the escape wheel. You do that a couple of times and then you'll have a nice uh, distribution of all the oil on your escape wheel and pallet fork. Now the pallet has been oiled. And uh, it's time to fit the balance. You can see there's an impulse pin here. You want the impulse pin to engage with your pallet fork. So your pallet fork, I'll, right now I'll um, put it in the right position compared to this. And then you want to get your impulse pin, which is now facing in the middle of the spoke here, outwards. And that has to come in that has to come in at the right angle turn it around engage with the pallet fork and hopefully the movement should start ticking That's so
very nice. We have a ticking movement again. So when I test the performance on this now, it will actually have the hour go to engaged. Okay, I've cheated a bit. I've uh, adjusted this um, amplitude 318, perfect beta 0 0.3. Happy with that. I did adjust it on the balance. I'm just trying to save some time. Crown down. So, crown facing south. Almost no variation at all. The amplitude will drop, but it's normal. Two and two now. Well, up position. Amplitude will go up again. It's very good. So plus minus two three seconds. Good amplitude in every position. Crown to the right. So, movement on the side, a little bit of variation here, not much. Let's do crown going to the left. Again, a little bit of variation, corresponds with the uh, crown to the right, and uh, gaining, and this is a bit to the left. So, crown, should we do up position. Oops. Again, very good. Overall, very good positional variation for this, uh, oh, I guess, 60 year old movement. Now, with the um, dial down position again, moving around, will settle and um, amplitude will um, go up. Very good, happy with that. Okay, here you can see the original uh, sweep second um, paint. And here's the paint I've matched up. So that's still wet, so I'm gonna let that dry up. But I think the match is pretty good. It's kind of a beige white. Uh, beige whitish show. Uh, let that dry for over 24 hours so I can apply the luminous compound as well. For the hands I've decided to do the luminous compound on both hands as the luminous compound on the hour hand was completely dissolved. Uh, well completely brittle I could have reforced it but I've decided to make mix up the batch. I actually got the original compound in here and I've also uh, done a little mixture of uh, different um, different um, colors and able to um, just get some different pigments in there to get the right kind of tone to uh, do the best match with the dial so we're not just going to do them light brown which you would do on a lot of other things we're going to try and get that uh, authentic brightling patina on it so what you do with the hands is you want to get that smeared nice and even the hour hand because it's thicker and do under the microscope. Now we'll let this dry while I uh, service the rest of the movement and then uh, you'll see the effect when it's dried.
I'm putting the column wheel back in place. That's the intermediate um, minute recorder. So here's the seconds recorder wheel and the minute recorder wheel. So this is the um, this is the uh, locking lever for the um, for the seconds recorder. Because if you didn't have this, um, your uh, the weight of the second hand would allow this to move around back and forth. But uh, when this engages, it locks it. There you can see it's engaged. If you reset it, it will open up. It, um, the lever touches has a uh, spoke that comes down and touches this, I believe. Um, we'll look at that a bit later. And here we have a part of the reset mechanism down here, and of course the um, intermediate um, minute, minute recorder wheel here.
Here I'm getting the start stop lever on. And uh, you can also see I've put the intermediate um, seconds recorded driving wheel here. We'll have the overlying wheel we'll press on here in a sec. Okay, now that's uh, in place, proof's in the pudding. That's, uh, that's actually currently running. I should stop your chronograph. There you go. And um, this should reset it. Top and bottom. Good stuff. Now for the dial and hands. oil on the cannon pinion. It provides a bit of lubrication between the cannon pinion. The power wheel, such. Put a little dial washer back on. And we're going to put the dial on. Okay, we're starting to get somewhere here now. We've got the hands back on. Everything seats to start, stop, reset. I decided to put the hands on while the um, movement was in the case. It just makes it easier. Um, I think the color matching is uh, pretty good. I'm happy with it. Uh, I think the luminous compound color matching is uh, really, really good. Not to pat myself on the back too much, but uh, it's, uh, it's not always easy to get the pigment right when you're doing, dealing with a uh, wet compound. But overall, this is looking pretty good. So turn that around so you can get the right uh, angle. 
but uh, yeah, I think this looks really nice and uh, we're kind of keeping the age look to it. So next we're going to put this uh, in a rotating bezel. You can see there's a little notch on this here. And that notch goes in here. Very important. Otherwise, you will have issues later if you're trying to flatten that. There we go, that's in place. And then we're going to pop this on. That actually clicks onto the rotating bezel. So that's what I meant with water resistance. I doubt that is, uh, <laughs> it has any water resistance. But there you go, that's the way it is made. I have trying a little bit with gaskets on the crown, etc. But with that bezel, it's not exactly going to keep a lot of water out. Excuse the sound from the compressor there. Just press it to place, like so. Remember that didn't move before? Now it does. That was simply just gunked up. Nice friction on this, not too, not too loose, not too hard. Very good. I'm feeling somebody will be very happy with that. I would be anyway. Got a new crystal as well. It's the old one had uh, become very thin, so by the time I polish those scratches out, it's, you're compromising the uh, integrity of the crystal and that would not be nice to have that uh, crack and smash or whatever while you're out doing something. So we'll put this to the side. I've cleaned the case up. I've uh, gotten most of the rust away. There's a little gasket in here, so I'm going to find a little gasket. Um, it's just going to help a little bit. Uh, if you do splash some water or whatever, it might, it might make a difference. So we're going to try and do that. Okay, found a gasket that kind of fits nicely in there. Let's pop the case back on. Simply a uh, push fit. Well, there we go. Brightling Cosmonaut, fully serviced and uh, looking very good. Chronograph working, bezel turning. What more do you want? I think we're going to have one happy customer. Anyway, uh, what do I think of this watch? I think it's iconic. I think it's a super cool design. Um, might be a bit too big for my wrist, but uh, overall, a very great looking watch. It's um, one you should keep away from water, as we discussed earlier. But this one seems to have survived and a uh, very good example. I'm very happy how the um, minute hand turned out. I think we really matched the uh, color pretty good um, compared to the other hands. And uh, the luminous compound is spot on compared to the aging on the dial. So overall, very happy. Great watch. Well, until next time, I hope you have a good one. I have to say, I really like the uh, 24 hour dial on this. Pretty funky. Good if you're out in space.